Good morning, welcome, welcome everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Chrissy, and today I'm going to be giving you a prediction reading for the 28th of February. Now before I get started guys, I've got a little bit of admin to get through. Welcome, welcome anybody new, um, please consider subscribing, great to have you here, we've built a little community of like-minded people, um, we share each other's experiences, what we're going through, because we all live in different parts of the world pretty much. Hit those like buttons guys, and please feel free to comment down below. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get back to you, and sometimes YouTube takes my comments for sometimes a week sometimes longer but I do get back to you I love hearing from you it I like to actually sit down and read my comments as I've said to you before okay let's get straight into the admin because there's a lot to cover guys um first off ka-ching win for the little people guys it is happening guys this year there's so much going on um in Queensland this is Queensland um where Stephen Miles has just become the premier up there. He took over from Palachuk, I call her, which was Anastasia Palaszczuk. Um, well, there's been a win about the vaccine mandates. It's huge, guys. Probably not on the news. I'm guessing not on the news. Sorry, guys, I've got to put my glasses on. <laughs> the writing gets a bit small. Um, so this is about police, nurses, paramedics, pilots. I'm guessing fireys as well. Um they apparently the court the supreme court says that the vaccine mandates were unlawful oh really uh we all knew that didn't we and of course nothing will probably come of it but like they were calling out last night on sky news what about all the lives they destroyed at the time people lost their jobs people couldn't pay their mortgages and this was worldwide we know it was so being forced and not only that what about the ones that were forced to take the jabs they got injured and this kind of thing, oh, it was so wrong. And you had no life unless you were jabbed, didn't you? Like, it was just completely mad. And literally, people had no jobs because of mandates. So, we've had a win, guys. It's huge for us down here in Oz. Cheers to that, guys. We'll take any victory, won't we? Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> oh, poor old Elbow. They showed on Sky News last night. They've been doing a few opinion polls, you know. Oh, Elbow's on the decline. <laughs> I think the guides knew that a few months ago. Um, Elbow's trustworthiness is just vanishing because you can't trust him. Um, and of course, he's pushing, pushing, pushing his misinformation bill. He's he's bringing out new bills here. We know this is global. We know Sushi Trudeau, the whole lot. Uh, oh, yes, they're wanting to bring out misinformation bill to pr pretty much shut everybody up, stop freedom of speech. So that's the big thing Elbow's pushing. Uh, which won't go down very well, will it? I wouldn't think. Um, and he calls his fans, this is this is his elbow, he calls his fans the Albanistas. That's what he terms people, the Albanistas, mean the people that follow him, like like he's got a little fan group. Like, God, it's insane, isn't it? And, and they, well, they were actually talking to some of the people that work with him in office and a lot of them um, know him as Yelbo. They call him Yelbo. Elbow, we call him Elbow, and a lot of his co-workers that worked under him and that call him Yelbow, because apparently he yells all the time behind closed doors. <laughs> oh, well, it's always good for a laugh, isn't it, these government leaders? Go figure. Um, and they're also calling out here um, a different subject, the gender pay differences. We've still got really massive gender pay differences between men and women. Um and apparently, yes, they called out a few. Most of the banks do this. They pay men a lot more money. Um, but Jetstar, which is owned, of course, by Qantas. So Qantas is back in the limelight again for paying men more than women. No, it just goes on and on. Oh, and sadly, guys, yes, here in Oz, Taylor has left Australia. Oh, she's heading to Singapore. Good luck over there, guys. Uh, but not without drama. Of course, Taylor's dad is being investigated for hitting or apparently hitting the paparazzi. Um, and it was so weird because Taylor had this, like, umbrella right over her head. She had it closed up and was walking along with this, like, umbrella. Like, I was thinking, why would you be hiding your face? Like, is it because she had no makeup on or something? Because she's just done all umpteen concerts with, like, 90,000 people at each one pretty much. Like, everybody's seen her. Like, I just don't get it. They obviously don't want any paparazzi getting pictures of her with no makeup on or something. I just, go figure. Why would you have an umbrella over your head like that? It's almost like to draw attention, isn't it, guys, really? 
Um, the other thing is they briefly had on the news this morning, which I know you'd be up to date in the UK. Yes, the Royal Kardashians are back on the world stage again. Prince William pulls out of an event. He was supposed to... Um, he was supposed to do a little talk at someone's funeral, a family member's funeral. He was supposed to get up and talk. Um, and this person was 45 years old. Well, I'm not sure if that's the same funeral. I could be getting muddled up there. But one of the royal, well, he was using that as his reason for dashing away. Perhaps it's two different events. Sorry, guys, just to confuse you. This person was 45 years old. I wonder what he died of. Anyway, we won't go down that road, will we? And there's raw, more rumours um, about Kate's, Kate, <laughs> Kate's health is in question. Like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, they love all the mystery and keeping people interested. See what I mean? They're trying to keep themselves on the world stage. It's probably nothing even that exciting at all. They're just, like, hamming it all up. It's very weird. And I do think it's weird. They keep saying how um, Charles has had his cancer treatment and everything, but... Have you seen pictures of him? Like, he just looks all normal. I could be wrong, but usually people, and I know a lot of you probably out there have been through these procedures and things and treatments. I know some of you have. Wouldn't it drain you of energy? And I don't know. It, 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 there's a lot of questions around the Royal Kardashians anyway. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention to you guys, which is very, very funny, and you've got to go and look it up. Look, if you're not on Cloud, if you're not, Signed up to Carl Vernon on Clown Planet. He's got, I think he's got two channels. It's hilarious. You have to go. You'll laugh every day. You'll have a great gut laugh. Well, this morning the video popped up of Pierre Polier in um, Canada. And he was being asked, is he authentic? Like about not having people involved with the WEF. Um, and he, it said that he pledges to ban cabinet ministers and that of his if he gets in from going there <laughs> and the way I've got, to, I've got to share it with you the way he described the WEF people he said it's a group of high-flying high-tax high-carbon hypocrites who all got on their private jets to fly off to a remote ski village where they talked about working class how working class people should not be allowed to heat their homes or drive their pickup trucks Oh, and then he finishes off. I've got to give you this quote because it's just so funny the way it just pours off his tongue. Um, all it is is the wealth transfer from the have-nots to the have-yots. <laughs> oh, how funny. He's <laughs> Polly, yeah. Polly, is that how you say it? I don't know how you say his name, but I did laugh. How funny. It's so true. <laughs> wealth transfer from the, the have-nots to the have-yots. <laughs> we know can, um, Trudeau would have a lovely yacht. Mm. It's bloody funny, guys. All right, let's get straight into the reading and we'll see what comes up. <laughs> Never boring. We need laughs on this channel because it's a circus this year. It really is. <clears throat> oh, they're showing me all these leaders, global elites all around the table now. They're all really touching base. I would say they're either going to start having their meetings. Remember I told you there'd be a lot of meetings this year of them all coming together and, you know, they're very important. Or they could be Zoom calls and they're working out, right, let's get going now. This is what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen because they've already started. There's a lot going on. Um, gosh, and I'm thinking of UK, UK getting hit with all this stuff. Um, you know, here we, on one hand, and I'm getting example, they're showing me sushi, standing there saying how these, I have to spell it, guys, otherwise I get a strike on YouTube. Um, don't forget, guys, I'm on Rumble as well over there. You can find me over there. Chrissy Fitzgerald, Psychic, all one word, all smalls. Um, no gaps in between. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I'm just plugging me my Rumble. I'm still figuring Rumble out, but I am over there now. Um, so we've got sushi on one hand, saying the jabs are S-A-F-E. Mm, and very effective, apparently, um, in Parliament. And then they sh they they keep showing him being um, being called out by that guy who was jab injured, and all the thousands of people, and well, it's probably more than that, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are jab injured, and how they're not getting compensated. And um, we all know that the um, big farmer and all that is exempt from all of this. Um, so he's a little bit, you know. Not really got any answers. Oh, he keeps looking at other people going, oh, haven't we got schemes set up for this and everything? Oh, so if they were SAFE, 
uh, you wouldn't need all the uh, schemes to help people when they're injured and everything, would you? Like, <laughs> how's just the idiotness of this? Sorry, the idiotness. I can't even get over it. It's the only word I can use. Idiotness. Of this whole debacle. So I feel like now all these leaders are really working on their, their big rollout plan. Um, it's like they're having their debriefings before they just go back and hit really hard. So I'm guessing end of March end of March into April, all go <laughs> full steam ahead for the global rollout for, well, this year's Clown Show 2.0, I'll call it. It's all going to be starting to happen. They're having a lot of debriefing meetings, all right, <laughs> for their big plans. But see, it's like I say to you guys all the time, when you don't incorporate the people, it's not great because it's not only... Um, do you not incorporate the people that don't even know what's going on? But you don't know how the people are going to react. And that's the reason I say it all the time. When you're not incorporating the people, it's an unpredictable outcome. Because are they going to stand up? Are they going to fight back? Are they going to go along with it? There's a lot of different outcomes. Um, so these global elites can think something's going to happen, but it doesn't mean it's going to. Netherlands farmers, European farmers, it's happening. It's happening. They're standing up. People are waking up, guys. Every day there's people waking up. It's brilliant. Um, all right, let's keep going. <clears throat> I feel like the farmers are getting wiser now. This is the farmer protest, the farmers fighting back. I feel like they're getting smarter and wiser. Um, it's like they're pulling out their own their own plans. It could be that they start to um, do their own thing um, and completely ignore government. Um, they might even start um, not paying taxes. Um, I feel like they, the farmers are going to start fighting back in their own way. Um, they're going to tell, well, I'd say a lot of them are doing that anyway. They're going to tell these leaders they can shove it up their, you know, backside where the sun don't shine um, because they're going to, they're going to just ignore what they're bringing in. So I'd say this is around taxes. They're not going to pay them. I feel like, um, and this will cause a lot of governments globally. Now, probably not in Australia, because like I said to you, zero happens down here. Um, they're going to just revolt. Um, it's the revolution. They're going to revolt. They're not going to pay the extra taxes. They're not going to pay oh, carbon taxes fuel taxes and excises and all this kind of crap that they're trying to feed people and cause them to go down this road. Um, that's what I'm getting. Oh, sorry, I got that itchy nose. What does that mean, an itchy nose? Doesn't that mean something? <laughs> I don't know. I should know. Um, so that's what I'm getting. The farmers are going to pull out their own and they're going to have some victories. I do feel, oh, God, I hope the UK stands up. I'm still getting it. Um, the farmers are going to have a lot of victories this year, lots. This farmer protest stuff's going to continue. It's still continuing, guys. It's not over yet. It's still growing. The capacity of the farmer protest is growing. It's awesome. Um, but the farmers are getting wiser. They're starting to, they're starting to, well, I'm guessing what the guys are saying is control the situation. Because they're en masse, they're starting to control things now. They're getting their power back. They're controlling um, their outcomes. That's what I'm getting. They're very strong, the farmers. They're very, very strong people. Um, God, you think what they go through. I tell you, I always talk to you and highlight about the droughts, the floods, um, not being able to feed your stock. You know, they go through really hard times. And when you go through a lot of hard times, it makes you very resilient and tough to things. Um, and you will stand up and fight. So that's what I'm getting. They have this real natural... Um, What's the word? Well, I guess tenacity is probably a word that comes to mind because they keep getting up and going again. But I am getting they've got this real ability to stand strong and firm. Uh, well, perhaps, too, that could come back to being very grounded because they're always on the earth. They're always out in nature. They're um, always walking on the earth and grounding themselves. Um, perhaps they're very grounded and very stable, too, farmers. So I feel like they're starting to turn things around. They're refusing... To, well, they're refusing to comply. <laughs> Yay! It's so good. 
Oh, sorry, guys. I just get excited. I just get excited. All right, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, of course we knew we would get it. I'm getting the Royal Kardashians. And they're showing me, like, um, they're just showing me chaos. We know they're in chaos at the moment. There's a lot going on. You know, I was talking about the William thing and all this kind of stuff. But there's this real chaos energy with the Royal Kardashians at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but you know what it is? It's like, I keep saying, they're trying to keep themselves on the royal stage and they have to be very important. Um, and they're juggling everything. But they're trying to keep all the balls in the air. See, they're trying to keep the balls in the air. Um, but the balls can start dropping because they're, remember they're only human guys. They're not um, these incredible, amazing people up on a stage performing. I mean, we know they think they're up on a big pedestal, but they are human and they start dropping the balls too. But also <clears throat> they're the very good distraction show from the sushi show. We know that's what goes on in UK. It's a very good distraction. The Royals are are removing the heat from sushi. That's what I'm getting, and I think we could all agree with that. Sushi is just, oh, my goodness. Oh, it's just not good, is it? <laughs> it's not good. Anyway, I am getting that. It's a big distraction. It's a big distraction. Because they remember, they, they want these rollouts to come out this year. They don't want any more fluffing, fluffing around, people standing up, fighting back. They don't want this. They want it to just happen. So they'll do whatever the hell they can to get people looking the other way while they meanwhile, you know, slip up their little tracking, tracing cameras. And you guys have been telling me about the 15-minute cities that they're starting to um, bring in like it's all normal. Oh, my God. It's insane. Um, all right. And where are you going to charge up your EV scooters, guys? Because no one wants to own them because they'd burn all the buildings down. But they want us all on electric bikes. <laughs> oh, it just gets crazier. Their, their plan is just going to shit, basically, guys. Excuse the French. But sometimes it's just the truth, isn't it? All right. Let's see where else we go. <clears throat> oh, I'm getting Maui. Hawaii. <laughs> we haven't had this for a while. Um, we know that what those poor people went through over there, and it's still continuing. But I am getting that Maui's, like, now been cornered up cornered off like it's like it people can't access the areas being rebuilt um which is very interesting um there's a lot of mystery around these areas i wonder if there's some sort of valuable resource there too that could even be something as well um and this was a good way for them to gain access to it we don't know see we're not we don't know what's been going on over the last few years um, with their little plans. So I am getting now that this Maui is kind of becoming off limits to the public. Oh, and they use the old, oh, it's very dangerous. You know, it wouldn't be hard. You could just say it's full of toxic chemicals and, yeah, oh, God, it'd be easy as, wouldn't it? So I am getting that. Um, it's very restricted. It's not, oh, come back and rebuild your home. I don't think it's like that at all. Mm, I think we knew it wasn't going to be like that. So I'm getting that for Maui. It was basically a um, kick everyone out of Maui. Um, those fires, weren't they? And it's worked, sadly. Um, oh, how's all the corruption and all the things going on? Uh, anyway, all right, let's keep going. And whenever I get Maui, I get Greece. I get these two together. Whenever I see visions of Maui, I always get like the Greek, Greece, Greek islands, Greek, something that goes on in Greek, which is going to be of a similar event or similar outcome. I'm just getting that. So there is something in Greece that's still hovering in my mind um, that these global elites want to get their hands on. Mm. Could be a resource, could be something of value as well. Um, we don't know because we're not there. Um, we don't know what sort of homework and everything these global elites have been doing, like I said, in the past few years. They're very clever and very cunning and manipulative. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, 
It's showing me the sun's going down in Germany, which we know they've had massive farmer protests, etc. Um, and it's showing me the sun's going down, and I'm getting that song that, um, the sun's going down on me. And what I'm getting, that's that song by um, George Michael and it, Elton John, isn't it? But what I'm getting is that the people in Germany are having a little rest at the moment. They're, they've had a few wins over there and they're finally able to have a little bit of, well, it's saying chateau, meaning the sun's going down. There's a little sense of calm in Germany at the moment where people can get a little bit of rest. Um, because they've had a few wins, it's like people can have a breather. So I'm getting the sun coming down, meaning there's a little bit of, well, the tensions aren't as high. I feel like there's a little bit of, well, I'd say respite in Germany at the moment, which is nice. I think the farmers would need it, wouldn't they? Plus, as you think of the food supplies, guys, <laughs> there wouldn't be much food getting shipped around the country in the trucks and that, would they, if roads are blocked, etc. All right, so if there's one more thing and we'll pull some cards, guys. I am seeing Chris Luxon in New Zealand. Um, he's going to start really meeting up with the rest of the world. You're going to see him doing a lot more wheeling and dealing. He'll be on the global stage a lot more. But he kind of has to, too, guys. I think we all knew that was coming. I still don't think he's a bad person. I still don't think he's that bad. I know he's going to implement things that, like I keep saying, will rub people up the wrong way. Um, but I, I think you're going to start seeing him making a real move now. It's like it's his turn on the chessboard. He's going to have to start moving things into action a bit now. He's been a bit quiet because he's he's been steadying the ship in New Zealand um, as the captain of the ship. But I feel like now he's going to really start to take charge of his country. Now, so he may implement a few things now. Um, but you're going to see more of him meeting with other leaders. And the guys are saying, still don't panic. Like, you know, when you see him with someone discussing things, like, don't go into panic mode. It doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to follow their <laughs> regime, um, especially if he was to meet with Xi Jinping or something like that. Um, sometimes it can just be about resources and trade trading. So it's not always that they're going to implement everything. So I still don't see him as horrific, um, but he will possibly rub people up the wrong way with a few other things that he does implement. Like I said, he's got to prove to, you know, the world leaders that he is on board with mm, all their garbage, all their garbage. So he figures if he just does a few other things, for example, address the climate change rubbish and, you know, a few of these kind of things that, as we all know, make zero sense, um, then he looks like, I think I've said this before, he's contributing and helping the rest of the world as well. He can't just sit there and go and do nothing because he's not going to get good trade with other countries if he's looking like he's disrespectful to other countries. So he feels he, so he's going to pick and choose parts that he'll roll out. I don't think he's just going to go hard like Trudeau or anyone like that. Um, he's he's going to actually pick and choose the things that he thinks, oh, unnecessary that's what i'm getting for chris luxon so he's not too bad guys he's just he's not perfect but none of them ever are are they um okay guys um let me see if there's one more thing and then we'll get these cards underway <clears throat> yeah they're showing me all these global elites right they're sitting around their table they're having their power wows and their their you know their briefings or whatever you call them um, and, and they're mixing these cocktails, but everything's going into the cocktail. It's like, you know how when you make a cocktail and you shake it, shake it, um, all your ingredients go in and it just becomes a big mush of one thing. Um, that's what I'm getting this year. And that's why we have to keep um, putting all the information into our Mulder and Scully X-File cabinets from that show X-Files. Um, because there's so many things that are questionable, so many things that are mysterious, so many things that make absolutely zero sense that we go, what? Um, we knew that was going to happen this year um, because it's a great big cocktail of 
this is what they're doing. They're just like putting everything in together. And when that's, when that's done, it's very hard to pull things out and make sense of anything. So this is, it's like their trickery, how they're hiding it. You know, it'd be like putting a flavor of like, say vodka into this cocktail, which is like mango fruity or something. And you have to, well, again, like the deconstructed apple pie I talked about the other day, which is what the reset is this year, our total shamozzle chaos. Um, you have to deconstruct it and work out what ingredients, what's happening and what's been put in there and why was that done because that's causing that. It's just all thrown in together this year. And, and I think that's why we're going to get hit very hard with everything. We know it's still sneaking along. Um, we've got all the bank closures. You guys keep telling me about that too, where you guys are. Um, scanning for your food so you get approved to buy your alcohol or whatever like this is happening so that's what i'm getting it's like they've made a giant cocktail and and people can't quite work out what the ingredients are or or what you know what's in it like i said we're even having trouble sorting out the uh clown show 2.0 this year it's very complicated they've taken it all up a notch see um when their basic rollout didn't go to perfection and go to plan um they had to come up with other sneaky manipulative ways to roll it all out their lovely red carpet oh my god it's a nightmare it just doesn't end does it guys let's pull some cards guys because it's just too much i knew this year was going to be challenging but seriously what the hell it's complete madness isn't it? The blessing is people have to be waking up because you can't look at this stuff and go, oh, this is normal. It's so not normal, isn't it? Gosh, I was thinking last night, you know, whenever you watch shows that are like film or that are shot back in the 80s or something, it takes you back, doesn't it? You know, we talk about music, you know, I think about roller skating. Like we think about things when we were going back to being five and different things like that the other day. And you just think life is, was, is, was so simple. We're just living our lives. And now we all have to, even us as BS detectors who are awake, we have to think all the time. I was thinking that yesterday. That's what I was getting around to. There's too much thinking going on. It's exhausting. We're having to use our brains. Look, the TP energy. Ascend. You have outgrown where you are now. Dream bigger. Retire. So keep ascending. Because we're doing our spiritual master's degree now this year according to the guides we're really moving um and expanding in our spiritual awarenesses and that's what the spiritual master's degree is it's about um moving beyond just your basic senses it's going deeper and, and really tuning in to everything around you isn't it in it and which is what we do but we have to keep doing it guys oh, i showed you whispering woods card kindness Take respite by a pond and be kind to yourself and others. And I think that's about prioritizing yourself too, guys. Um, a lot of us here just tend to sit out in nature. We have time for ourselves. You might do knitting. You might do cooking. It doesn't matter. Whatever switches your mind off, that's being kind to yourself because it's nurturing yourself and looking after yourself. Really important this year, guys, because... <laughs> We need time out because our little brains will explode if we don't. Let's do my Be Here Now book. Absolutely love this book. We're getting so much, so many lessons. Ooh, this is interesting. Ancient landscapes. Ancient landscapes. I'll just read a little bit. Moments spent in the depth and breadth of nature's splendor dwarf, mesmerize and bedazzle us. We can even find our spirits catapulted back in time or feel the wonderful secret stories of the planet upon which we live. Ancient landscapes brim with the energy of times gone by and of other life on earth. See textured rock faces where ocean waves once washed to shore. Notice trees once burnt by fire growing again and again. Hear the footsteps of dinosaurs <laughs> or ponder the hidden fossils of creatures great and small. Admire how rivers have run over rocks, forming their wonderful curvaceous shapes. Notice how the kiss of the sun has lightened and brightened the face of the earth. There is nothing like the sheer scale and magnificence of nature to speak to our own aliveness and humble us with its unspeakable power. Oh, and it says, hang on, 
It is no wonder that within ancient landscapes, we can find ourselves experiencing deep, enduring healing. So true. See, and that's part of the awakening and expanding as well. You start to look beyond things. Like a lot of people would just look at that, for example, and just say, oh, that's a nice rock wall. Whereas we'd look beyond it. We'd look at the colors. We'd look at the trees growing on it. We'd think of the history like, wow, how did that, how did that, how did that rock landscape, like how did that come to be? with the process of erosion see this is what the spiritual masters is guys it's looking deeper into things um and that's what we're doing we're looking you know not only do we just look at something we look at the depth of it it's like we've got this uh, oh i don't want to say three-dimensional <laughs> 3d because we're not in 3d anymore but we 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 can see things well, it's that seeing life through a different lens. We look much deeper now than just everything on the surface. Um, we see things for what they really are because we can feel, we sense, we know. That's how we are as awakened beings and empaths, intuitives, psychics, light workers. If you're on my channel, you're one of those. Um, and, and there's even more sort of others as well. Um, but, you know, intuitives we listen to our body and what's going on and what we're hearing messages we're hearing look at us all manifesting heaps of us have manifested the seagull this week it was brilliant um i got mine a lot of you got yours <laughs> what have you got it in the middle of england how i don't know <laughs> um so we're really um we're really checking that we're on our course aren't we guys we're we're getting these little manifestations i'll see if i can get a new one for you today hang on skateboard <laughs> There's one. You got to see a skateboard, any form, doesn't matter what. <laughs> Not a skateboard. Oh, how do the gods think of these things? All right, I'll see if there's anything to finish off with today. Hang on. Yeah, I'm getting that song. <laughs> I don't know who sings it. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, that's a cute song. I think I'll leave you with that today. I think I'll leave you with that song today. Um, what a wonderful world. Because it really is a wonderful world. And like I said, that's what the spiritual awakening is. Um, well, the spiritual master's degree really makes you appreciate what a wonderful world we're living in. Oh, now they're giving me that other song. What a beautiful world it would be. What a glorious time to be free. Da, 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 da. Who sings that? I don't know who sings it. But that's a great song too. What a beautiful world it would be. What a beautiful world it would be. What a glorious time to be free. And then we do feel free, don't we, guys? Despite everything happening, we still manage in the chaos to find that freedom, that feeling of freedom and, and living our best life despite everything sort of falling down around us and collapsing, which is good because we need it to do that. All right, I'm going to say goodbye for Mr. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Um, take care, like buttons, please subscribe and please comment down below. And don't forget, go find me on Rumble and hit the like buttons over there, guys, too. <laughs> that helps me too. Okay, take care and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.